Welcome back guys to your 35th JavaScript tutorial and in this tutorial, actually I think it's the 36th tutorial. Anyways, in this tutorial I'm going to be going over the math object. Now, just like the array object we saw in the last few tutorials, the array object had built-in properties such as length and it also had built-in methods such as sort and push pop. So aside from the array objects that's one of the built-in objects in JavaScript you also have something called the math object so this is really useful whenever you're making like a calculator or a program that does calculations on any kinds of numbers the math object has built-in properties and these properties are most often mathematical values such as pi Euler's constant and let's go ahead and actually enough of me talking let's go ahead and take a look at some of those properties right now like document write and let's go ahead and write one of the properties such as math.pi now pi is going to be like 3.14159265335 so in order to save us the trouble of having to write out that number every time what we can do is we can just go ahead and save it and check it out JavaScript already stores the value of pi, so anytime you want to use pi whenever you know calculating the area of a circle or something, you don't have to go Google the value of pi and set it equal to a variable. JavaScript already stores it as a property of that math object to give you very easy access to it. So that's one of the beauties of the properties of your math object. Another one is Euler's constant, and Euler's of course begins with the E because they decided on the spelling of that and that is this again so the properties of the math objects in JavaScript are basically just um, values that have mathematical meaning so you're saying alright that's pretty cool I don't have to go google the number every time but aside from that the math object is useful for some of its methods as well such as in order to find the square root of a number yeah we could go ahead and make a function for it but a lot of these easy simple mathematical functions are already built in JavaScript so such as finding the square root of a number or whenever we're doing like 5 to the third power there's a form or excuse me there's a method for that already and if we wanted to make a function for rounding up or rounding down we could use a built-in math method for that as well so let's go ahead and make a program that calculates that allows the user to enter a number and it calculates the square root of that number so again like I said we can go ahead and create our own function for finding the square root but why do that when we can use one of JavaScript's built-in math object methods. So let's go ahead and make a variable and set it equal to n and this will be equal to the number that the user enters and in order to do that we need to give them a prompt box aka a space to enter a number and we'll give them a real simple prompt like enter a number and by default we'll set it equal to nothing at all. So now we need another variable to store the answer of that. So the math object is going to calculate it and we're going to store the answer in a variable called answer. So now, in order to use this math object that square roots a number, you do this. Write the math object, use a dot separator, and the name of the method is this, sqrt. Now the parameter is what number do you want to square root? Well, they already entered a number and it's going to be stored in the variable n, so just go ahead and stick that number in there. Say they entered 81. What this is going to do is it's going to take the square root of 81, which is 9, and it's going to store that 9 in the variable answer. So now all we have to do is print out their answer. So we can, you know, document and write it, but let's go ahead and make an alert box because we already have a prompt box that pops up. An alert box, what do you know, make the feel of the program a little more natural. So now let's just go ahead and write something like the square root of and now we would just go ahead and write n since that was the original number then just go ahead and write like is answer so now it's gonna well let me go ahead and run it and then I'll talk you guys through it one more time so it's gonna say enter a number and just go ahead and type in like 16 press ok and it's gonna say the square root of 16 is 4 simple enough let's give it a harder one to you know make sure it's running correctly enter number 144 okay the square root of 144 is 12 working perfect so basically the program works like this you give it a prompt box 
and the user enters a number such as 144. Now 144 is stored in the variable n, so it takes that value of 144, finds the square root of it using this built-in square root method, and it stores the answer, which is 12, in the variable answer. And then last but not least, it just says the square root of 144 is 12. There you go. So as you can see, using this little you know eight characters of code and whatnot is a lot more simple than having to write our own square root function and then calling our function and then making sure that they you know enter the right values and yada 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 a lot of these functions are already built into javascript so why am i telling you this i just want to save you guys the trouble of you know having to write your own functions all the time because they were saying you know what this is really common function I bet JavaScript already has this built in chances are it does so that is why the math function or excuse me the math object is useful not only when working with math constants but also simple math methods and if you want a list of the math methods um just go ahead and look online they have a huge list of them they're probably I want to guess like 30 or so, but anyways, enough of me talking. That is all I'm going over for the math object, so thank you guys for watching. Uh, don't forget to subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next tutorial.